Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're going back in time again. Uh, one of my viewers out there, one of the subscribers, asked me if we could do a 302, a Mitchell 302 saltwater reel. So I don't have one that's functional, I have one that's a parts reel, but I'm going to do uh, what we can to show you how to maintain this reel, uh, how to take it apart in its entirety, where the, uh, the key lubrication points are, and uh, how to do a basic service on it. So this one's a parts reel because it's missing the metal washers and the drags on the spool and uh, it, it's got a little bit of a grind to it. So uh, uh, having said that, uh, we'll never be able to restore this probably to its right function, but uh, I imagine this one's been used in salt water for some time. I notice there's a lot of corrosion on the, uh, uh, the reel seat here and uh, some uh, paint loss as well. But uh, overall, let's just go ahead and take this apart. And uh, if I ever do get drags, with the exception of it being a loud sounding reel, uh, it, it could go back into service. So let me show you how to do this. Uh, I guess we were reminded on this reel by just doing that hidden reel a little while ago. And uh, it's got two side plates. Uh, so we're going to take them both apart. So to start, I usually like to take the handle off. And uh, those of you that watch the videos know I like to use a parts tray for all of the pieces and parts that I take off. And that I also recommend taking pictures along the way if you don't work on these reels so that uh, you know where the, um, the sequence is and where those parts belong. And for example, here, this is an easy one here. Uh, these side plate screws on the, the non-handle side are shorter than the, uh, the side plate screws on the other and also on the, um, the non-handle side we have a little uh, spring tensioner that, that fits under the spool. Sometimes uh, those things go away, uh, they get lost, but uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it you uh, might find that piece on the floor somewhere and uh, not know what to do with it and maybe not even put it back together. So this is an interesting aside. Uh, Mitchell put this little red button here that can be activated by a coin. Uh, there's, a, there's a rounded slot there and it's intended to take that off so that you can lubricate the gears. Well, I can't tell you how many times I find these Mitchell reels that slot's never been uh, opened up. And you can see on the back here all it is it's a quarter of a turn to pop that out. I'm not going to do it here with my fingers but uh, just a quarter of a turn to pop it out. That would give you access to the pinion gear and the main gear and you could, you could do your oiling right there. This is that little clip I was referring to. A lot of times that gets lost but that provides a ramp to the spool as well. So we're going to take this apart in its entirety as I mentioned. Uh, we'll go piece by piece and show you how this thing works. The only thing that's an access point here is a screw that holds the, um, the shaft on down below here onto kind of like an X uh, or an H rather patterned uh, clamp that rides up and down both sides of this uh, main body. So I'm just going to take that off right now, to take the screw out. And again, if, you, uh, if you're not that familiar with these reels, uh, you would want to note that this very small, thin uh, screw came out of that, uh, that shaft. And that shaft has kind of got a V on it. It's going to uh, sit over this carrier uh, that it rides. I'm going to take the spool off, and again, this spool doesn't have the drags in it, but note two things on this. The first is that you cannot take the, the drag knob off completely uh, because it's screwed to the shaft, so you have to take the, the screw out. Then you can back the, the drag knob off completely. And in this case, I have the compression spring, but I do not have the metal washers that belong in the spool. Therefore, uh, that's one of the reasons why it's a parts reel. Next thing I'm going to do is take the collar off, and the collar comes off with a, um, a 9 millimeter wrench turned counterclockwise. That'll enable you to pull your spool off. After you remove the nut that sits under the collar, and the nut under the collar is a 14 millimeter nut turned counterclockwise to loosen it, and you can pull that nut off. Then you can pull the spool out, and here's your spool. Okay. Now your spool has an indentation in the back of it here. You'll see the slot. Hopefully, uh, it can show. You can see the slot here, and that's because there's a keyway. I think that's the proper term for it that sits on the pinion gear, 
and now that just pops out. So be careful. It's just a little circular piece. It's rounded on the one side, keyed on the other side, and that holds your pinion gear uh, in, in place there. And here's that little clip that I was talking about that often falls off that folks don't know where it belongs. That provides a ramp for the um, uh, anti-chatter, if you will, on the spool itself. So just be aware of that and where that came from as well. Again, I'm going to take this off all the way. So uh, you want to just be aware of the steps that we're going on. Take pictures. If you're doing it yourself and you're not comfortable, take pictures along the way so that you know where these pieces and parts came from. All right, so these screws on this side of the plate are longer, right? We have a longer screw versus the side plate screw with its non-gear non side. You can see the difference in the two. You want to make notes of that. All right, we're going to continue pulling this off. And I'll show you the other reason why this one is a parts reel in a moment. It has to do with the bearing that's up top. Uh, there, this is a one ball bearing reel. It was high quality for the time and in the 60s I can remember uh, fishing on the Jersey Shore and whoever had a Mitchell 302 was darn proud of it. Uh, it was pretty much state of the art at the time. Single ball bearing, it was up on the top of the shaft there and uh, it uh, can be serviced, it should be serviced as you do the overhaul of this reel. Uh, however, in the, uh, in the case of this one, unfortunately, uh, it can't be serviced because that's the other break. There's two screws, one on each side, that hold that bearing in rather than a, a C-clip. Uh, it's also held in by a collar. I'll go pull that collar right now. I'll try to pull that collar right now. So there's a collar that, that sits over the bearing. I have a little trouble with it. Let's see if I can't grab it with my pin. You have the collar that sits over the bearing. It's got the two indentations where those set screws are. One on each side. The set screw on this side can be backed off, but unfortunately the set screw on the other side somehow has been ground down and it's, uh, it's locked. So to do a complete service on this, I cannot get this burring out. So what you want to do on that is you want to clean it up as best you can. For example, use some, some WD-40 to, to get some lubrication there. And then after we pull this main shaft out, uh, which I'll show you in just a second, we will want to, uh, to service the burring from underneath. So to get this main shaft out, then once you remove that keyway, you can push the, the pinion gear through then you can pull the whole sequence up and you should be able to get enough clearance to uh, oh, came up again there you go should be able to get enough clearance there you go to override and pull this out from underneath now, these are pressed in there's a uh, it's up top here there's an automatic stop on this there's stops on that as well just be aware of that and then once you do that, then we're down to the basic body on this side. And here's that H clip that uh, is the carrier for the bottom of the spool shaft. So we're just, I'm going to leave that here because we're going to go right ahead and put it on. Clean the body up completely. Again, this is a parts reel. We're not going to go crazy here for the time of this, the sake of the time with the, the video. Clean the body up completely. Lubricate the channels. And we'll go through that exercise just to show you. I'm using some uh, blue grease here, so we'll put some blue grease back on those channels on both sides. Make sure that that's clean. Make sure this is clean. This is the carrier. This goes up top. And then you can see the bearing underneath here well, as best we can. This is the bearing that uh, rides. This one is functional. It, uh, it's a little loud, but it's functional and it's also well lubricated. Uh, ideally you would want to pull this set screw and again the other set screw but this one somehow has been worn and it is locked in there and it can't be moved trust me I tried it uh, so uh, we can't pull that bearing out and if that bearing happened to have been seized which this is not uh, if it happened to be seized this would just be uh, you'd either have to drill that out or uh, just give up on the reel so I'm going to take that H clip and I'm just going to put that right back in here right now because we've kind of showed you how to, to get that apart. And this is a symmetrical clip, so it doesn't matter which side of the 
uh, the channel it's writing in. And it has a little tensioner in it. Okay, so there we go with that. So the, the clip is on. Now this assembly, this is your, your pinion gear and this is your, uh, your spool carrier. You want to make sure that they're cleaned. In this case they've been cleaned. You want to make sure that all of the teeth on that pinion gear are in good condition, which they are. And you want to make sure that there's some lubrication. So again, underneath the spinning part you can use some oils this one spins on this shaft as well and then on the main gear itself noticing that it is a little rough up top here that might be one of the causes of the grind uh, I'm going to use a little bit of steel we'll see if that maybe is some contamination or something on this I'll try and clean that up yeah, it's, it's still a little bit of a, a uh, contamination there okay and then on this main teeth of this gear. Once we put it back in, we're going to want to put some blue grease in that as well. All right, so we reseated this uh, H clip. I'm going to come in from behind with this. And now remember, you took pictures along the way. This is the non gear side. That's important. You want to make sure that uh, when you seat this, you have the carrier in the opposite direction. So we're going to push down on these two. Going to insert it through the bearing again. We should be able to pull this up, kind of reversing what we just did. And then we're going to put the main shaft back on. Remember, it's got a little fork that rides over that H carrier. And then we're going to go look for that little screw there, the one that had the, the small uh, threading. We'll put that in, and then we're just going to go retighten this. So that takes care of how to do the upper portion of this service. And again, I back this off. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. This, the bearing uh, set screw there. And then I showed you on top of that that we have this little carrier. It's got the two notches in it. They sit over those set screws. And that collar goes back on the bearing like that. Okay. And then once we do that, then we can push the shaft through. And now we're looking for that little hole where the keyway goes. Pretty sure that's what that little thing is called. And again, this is the reason why we use parts buckets because small pieces, particularly something like this, can get lost very easily. So uh, you lose that, and uh, you're looking for a parts wheel at this point. Those parts aren't available any longer. Okay, so now we want to play that interminable game here of trying to set that little circle into the the piece of the uh, the shaft. Go ahead and grab it with the needle nose pliers if I can. Those of you that watch my videos know that I don't have a lot of luck with small pieces and parts, but we're in. Now we're going to line that square. Oops, we are out. We're in, we're out, we're in, we're out. There we go. And this brings me to my favorite point in the conversation, usually where I say you need a lot of patience to do real repair because you don't always get it right the first time. And some of these things are put on by hands a lot smaller than mine. So uh, just play around with it till you, you're sure you got it set. And I'm pretty sure I got it set now. At least it feels that way. I'm just grab the you know, those pliers there to square it up with the shaft. Okay, now the only other piece we need to put in is that anti-vibration spring. I'm going to lock that over the top here. And then we can reset the spool, not spool carrier, looking for the slot so that the keyway can sit in there. And once we have that seated, we can go ahead and put that 14 millimeter nut back on. Now again, ideally I would like to, re to pull that bearing, but in this case, uh, that's one of the reasons why this is a parts reel. I wasn't able to pull the bearing because uh, that set screw is stopped. 
but uh, we did have enough room there to uh, to make sure that that bearing was spinning. And with that spin, we also noticed that uh, we could access that from the top and the bottom and do the lubrication. So now I'm putting the collar back on for the spool. I'm going to use that nine millimeter wrench to tighten that down. And I'm holding the back of that pinion gear so it doesn't spin as I turn that shit down. Okay, so this is the way that it looked when we came in. We had the, uh, the, the shaft with the set screw on the H, and this is opposed. The, the groove is on the other side where the main, main gear will drive off of that. I'm just going to go ahead and put the spool back on. Again, noting that normally you would have wire drag washers in here, which we do not have, which is another reason why this is a parts wheel. And then there's a spring that goes in here, the nut goes on top, and then once we tighten this down, we'll tighten the, the screw down. So with your case, if uh, you're servicing one of your reels, you're going to have those drag washers in here, and those drag washers are going to uh, need to be checked to make sure that they're clean. There's also a different series in there. There's not all the same drag washers, so you want to make sure as you do that, that the uh, that you have the right sequence there between the lock washers, the drag washers, and so on. All right, once we do that, we've, uh, we've made sure that the bearing under here is oiled. You can do that uh, kind of like this, if you will, underneath it, since we couldn't get that bearing out. Um, you can also make sure that you have the blue grease on here for the pinion gear, and then you want to make sure you get some blue grease in the slot as well. Okay, so we'll move out the, the, the scheme of things right now. I'm going to come over and do the main gear servicing. That's in the drive side plate. First thing I always like to do is make sure that that anti-reverse here is off. It, it is in the off position right now. And we're going to pull that main gear out. You want to make sure that you clean around here. This is a bushing, so there's nothing you need to do with that other than make sure it's clean. But to make sure it's clean, you can use uh, Q-tips, just for, as an example. You want to make sure that your dog is functioning, the anti-reverse dog, so that's what I'm doing here. You have a small spring that's holding that on. You also have a pivot point. It doesn't hurt to put a little oil on and behind that. And then we're going to just make sure that, uh, again, it's on the off position. So it's backed off. That's because when you go to reset this gear, you have the ratchet behind it, and you don't, uh, if it's on, you're not going to be able to sync that up easily. So you want to make sure that you get that done. And then we're just going to go over to the main gear. We're going to do two things. We're going to make sure that the oil on the inner circle here, so that you have a nice uh, uh, lubricated section there. And then we're just going to make sure the outside of this has some blue grease on it as well. And then we can reinstall that. Now, when we go to put this back together, there's two things going on here. The first is that you need to get the stud on the main gear aligned properly. Actually, I should take that out. It'd probably be easier to, to do it that way. So we want to make sure that the stud is aligned and that the carrier is aligned. There we go. Because these two pieces here, there's, this, there's two studs here that sit into the case. You can see the holes in the case there. So you want to make sure that they're aligned and that we have the alignment of the inner stud as well. So. I line them up in a single row across. I make sure that the, the carrier on the spool is in the center. Then visually, you can kind of line them up. And then you want to make sure that you get the... That didn't work as well as I would like it to. There we go. again. There we go. 
And then the best thing to do once you do that is to turn the reel and make sure that you've got the complete carry on this. I've fallen out of the uh, sequence there. Let's try this again. So it takes a little bit of patience to get it right, but uh, once you do, then you know that you've got the, the reel set properly. Okay, we're into one, not quite in the other. Still don't have it. I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is get these two pins into that side. So it just takes a little bit of trial and error. That should be it now. Okay, we got it now. And then with the throw off on this, we can put this back on. And remember, it's the longer plate screws that go in this. So these reels, uh, some people are intimidated by them. I think just because of the number of moving parts, uh, the way that that shaft comes out, the bowing and the set screws, it's pretty fancy engineering for the 60s. Well over engineered. Uh, a lot of times folks never even got these things serviced. Uh, because the darn things work so well that uh, to kind of use them till they broke and if you were fishing them a couple of times a year they didn't break so uh, in this case uh, this one I guess something happened up top with the spool where somebody lost the uh, um, the core uh, pieces but uh, you know the drags at the time would have been available pretty commonly now they're not available at all you got to go find them to be maybe on a parts reel on eBay or something, but this one was sold for parts. Again, somebody had asked, how do you service this reel? And I, I figured I would just grab my parts reel here, knowing that it's got some deficiencies there with the bearing and all, but to show you just how to, uh, to go ahead and, and get that done if this is one that you're fishing today and you want to service or restore. All right, so we got that done. Go over to the other side here. Put the other side plate back on. That little clip came out, but that's okay. It's easy enough to put back in, just like that. Bring the side plate up. Short screws now on this one. And we're just a handle and a throw away from uh, putting this back together. So it's, this will grind a little bit because that was the nature of a parts reel. But again, if you follow the steps that I just did here, you'll have a successful cleaning. Uh, lubrication and uh, with the right uh, drag washers which I don't have here uh, you'll be able to fish this reel just as it was fished in the 60s so uh, very dependable reel collectible I guess uh, this one's not collectible but uh, I guess there are fans out there that uh, like their childhood reels and uh, want to put them on display and certainly you can do that with this reel uh, it's something to be proud of again if you were fishing these things in the 60s uh, you were darn proud of this reel uh, as compared to what some of the other reels are that were on the market at the time. Okay, so I'll just put this, uh, this drive handle back on here and uh, we'll be set. So I hope this has been helpful. This is kind of what I'm doing in the video is just sharing my experiences with you on how these reels worked. There you go. So it's a, it's a nice reel. It'll do what it wants to do, it should do. And uh, continue to be serviced for a while. And again, we knew the deficiencies there with the bearing. We knew the deficiencies up top here with the, uh, the lack of the uh, uh, drag washers. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it showed you how to go about doing that with the Mitchell 302. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, I reply to, uh, to all. If you like what you saw, please like the video. If you want to see more of those, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.